An unconscious bias is an error or mistake in the evaluation process that stems to the fact that the evaluator is basing the evaluations on broader characteristics that associate to that person rather than to an actual evaluation which is based on the information on that person. And these broader characteristics mainly relate to gender schemas that are mental map or social roles that we all share or that people into specific, specific cultural context share about what does it mean being a man and being a woman in terms, for example, of types of careers, types of role, types of attitudes and behaviors that are expected from people belonging to that gender. My name is Alessandra Lazzazzara. I'm scientific advisor at WiseGrow and associate professor of organization studies and human resource management at the University of Milan. One of the most common unconscious gender bias into the workplace is the think manager, think male bias, according to which we tend, for example, to recognize more leadership characteristics and we tend to associate more leadership characteristics to men rather than to women. Just because according to the gender schemas that we all have, um, men are considered more assertive, goal-oriented and determined than women. Of course, these are stereotypes, but in some cases, when we rely too much on stereotypes, we take decisions which are biased. Another bias could be the benevolence bias, according to which, for example, we avoid to offering um, career opportunities or um, period abroad to women coming back from the maternity period, just because we assume that we don't want to uh, apply for that positions or having that job rotation, for example, uh, without directly asking to that woman if she wants or not to change roles or taking new opportunities, new responsibility and so on. Some of the strategies that can be undertaken both into the workplace and more specifically into research context in order to include inclusivity are related to two main aspects. One is more related to policies, so work practices and policies that should be revised in order to increase inclusivity, uh, such as, for example, introducing a new form of recruitment, such as blind resumes or quotas or KPIs in terms of recruitment. But on the other side, there are other types of strategies that can be adopted that are more oriented toward increasing awareness. And we may increase awareness on such a topic by using, for example, training or knowledge sharing opportunities, a coaching session, a sponsorship program, networking programs. So I really believe that a mix of hard um, policies and, and practices and soft policies and practices more oriented toward knowledge sharing and, and uh, developing skills related to inclusion, um, it's the right mix in order to actually achieve this goal.